President Museveni, the floor is yours. Uh, His Excellency uh, President Vladimir Putin, Their Excellencies, the African Heads of State and Government, the people of Uganda send you greetings and well wishes. I have had the good fortune of watching and participating in freedom activities in our area for the last 60 years plus. In order to understand the struggles we have been involved in, we should be reminded that by 1900, the whole of Africa had been colonized except for Ethiopia. This colonization followed 500 years of taking slaves from Africa and the devastation that criminal trade caused. It was not only Africa that was colonized, but also much of Asia, India, Indonesia, Indochina, Burma, the Philippines, Malaysia, ETC, and the subjugation and extermination of the indigenous people of the Americas and Australia. <laughs> However, these criminal acts by the imperialists, the slave trade and colonialism provoked the colonized people into launching a resistance movement by some of the black people in the United States of America in the persons of Dubois and Pademont who launched the Pan-African movement. This was the first step. Secondly, in 1912, the African National Congress of South Africa was launched, led by new resistance fighters, different from before, when the leaders of the resistance were the kings and chiefs, such as Kavarega of Uganda, Mkwawa of Tanzania, Lobengura of Zimbabwe, Mwang of Uganda. Thirdly, the huge country of the Soviet Union was taken over by communists in 1917, and so was the huge country of China in 1949. Those communists were staunch anti-imperialists. Fourthly, our good fortune was that the greedy imperialists started fighting among themselves over us. I'm referring here to the so-called First and Second World Wars. In effect, these were inter-imperialist wars vying for domination of the world. In those wars, the imperialists weakened themselves to the advantage of the anti-colonial movement. That is how India, Pakistan, Indonesia, ETC got independence. Some of the imperialists tried to cling to colonies but they were defeated in Algeria, Vietnam, Kenya, Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Cape Verde, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and South Africa. Fifthly, even within the imperialist countries, we had allies that were against the evil system. People like Fena Brokwe, Dingo Foot, Olof Palme were with us and with our parents before us in opposing this evil system. It is these five factors that caused the defeat of the imperialism and restored our sovereignty to some extent. These are, again, the anti-colonial movement in Africa, Asia and Latin America, the rise of communism in the Soviet Union, China, Cuba, North Korea, ETC, the two inter-imperialist wars of the last century that caused the weakening of the imperialists of the imperialist countries to our advantage, even when our parents were used as cannon fodder in those criminal wars, fighting the Japanese in Burma, the Italians in, in Ethiopia, 
the Germans in North Africa and Europe. Then fifth, the Pan-African movement launched by some of the black people in the United States of America and the support by some fair-minded persons in the imperialist countries, persons, as I've already said, like Fena Brockway, Dingo Foot, all of Parliament and others. We are therefore happy to be here in Russia and we take this opportunity to thank the Soviet peoples and other socialist countries for that support. However, flag independence did not, in the majority of cases in Africa, mean healthy disengagement with imperialist economies. Up to now, many of the African economies still face the bottlenecks and distortions of the colonial era. Although some progress has been achieved, a lot remains to be done. That is why you hear that the GDP of Africa is currently US dollars 2.7 trillion, smaller than the individual economies of countries like Japan, Germany, ETC, not to, not to mention the United States or, or China. This stunting of the African economies is caused by a number of bottlenecks that I may not have time to enumerate here. We have, however, identified them and we are handling them together with our brothers in the African Union. However, one example can bring out some of these bottlenecks. This is the issue of coffee. The global value of coffee businesses currently is US dollars 460 billion. 460 billion. This is the value of the coffee in the world. However, all the coffee producing countries in the world, Africa, Brazil, Colombia, Vietnam, all of us, take only US dollars 25 billion out of this. The coffee business in the world, 460 billion. All of us, the coffee producers in the world, our share, 25 billion uh, dollars. Africa's share is US dollars, 2.5 billion. Out of the 460 billion, Africa's share is 2.4 billion. With, with Uganda taking 800 million dollars, because we are now producing 800 million bags of 60 kilograms each. Germany, Germany, a non-coffee producing country, earns US dollars from coffee, 6.85 billion from coffee, more than all the African coffee producing countries. My young friend from Burkina Faso was asking about the, this where the problem is. I could see he's very worried, the young, the, our young soldier there. So you have the answer here. This is part of modern slavery. This is the modern slavery. What is causing this? Africa being locked into, and also locking itself into, only producing raw materials of agriculture, minerals, ETC, and abstaining from adding value. A kilogram of good coffee today and it's about US dollars 2.5. The same kilogram roasted and processed outside Africa earns about US dollars 40. So we get $2.5 for a kilo of coffee. Somebody who is clever outside gets $40. This is the hemorrhage that has stunted Africa's growth. There are other bottlenecks, but I do not have time to go into them. Therefore, my proposal to our allies of Russia, India, China, ETC, is to point out to them that they could help here by policy decisions to buy value-added products from Africa rather than raw materials. 
those are products like processed coffee instead of, of bean coffee, chocolate instead of cocoa beans, textiles instead of just cotton, steel instead of iron ore, iron ore we call it, our languages are richer than English, we call it obtare, obtare that's iron ore, different from the, the, the metro. Electric batteries, instead of just lithium, ETC. Part of the issues we are solving among ourselves in Africa is the issue of the free flow of goods and services in the continental free trade area. If this is addressed, the other problem of food, which people are talking about so much, for African societies, will also be partially addressed. In Uganda, we don't have a problem of food. Uganda is a net exporter of food. Products like maize, milk, bananas, fruits, fish, cassava, not to mention beverages like coffee, tea, cocoa, vanilla, it is, are produced in big quantities, and with irrigation, bigger quantities are possible. Without irrigation, our farmers produce 5.3 tons of bananas per hectare. With irrigation and fertilizers, that production has gone 53 tons per hectare in some of the government-supported farms. It is therefore important for our partners to know that some of the African countries, such as Uganda, produce huge quantities of food, and moreover, food of unique nutritional value, beef with yellow fat, instead of the cholesterol-laden types you get from many parts of the world, potassium-rich bananas, high cream milk, fish with a nuni nairo patch bladder that is a cure for some maladies, millet with protein, carbohydrates, and iron together. What we actually need are markets in both Africa and beyond. This is part of the problem. Some of the African countries have got a lot of food, but they cannot sell it to the other countries because of the, uh, of the trade barriers uh, within Africa. Secondly, you could also encourage your companies... Кроме того, вы можете также работать своими компаниями, чтобы они сами способствовали созданию добавленной стоимости в Африке. Value addition to the abundant raw materials in Africa means more jobs for the unemployed African youth that are dying in the, Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean, trying to reach Europe and more money in their pockets. They will then afford to pay for more electricity generated by turbines made from outside, which creates more jobs and money for the turbine producers outside. After some delays, we in Africa are making some good moves. One of them is the CFTA, the Continental Free Trade Area, that is uniting the huge market of Africa of 1.5 billion people. We shall be 2.5 billion in the next 30 years. Remember that Africa is 12 times bigger than India in land area. But until recently, the population of India has been bigger than that of Africa. Therefore, Africa has actually been underpopulated for much of the millennia, the fact that it is the origin of man, Homo sapiens sapiens, four and a half million years ago, notwithstanding. Today, on account of modern medicine, Africa will have optimal population for the first time in human history. Finally, those who foment wars on account of ideological issues are wrong and their time and opportunity wasters. Human history will move on whether they like it or not. Did the religious wars in Europe impose religious conformity in the world? You remember there were, there were people who, were, who wanted to make sure that everybody is a Catholic, wanted to make sure, and they were using war, and it, what happened? They failed. The, did Metternich, there was the o o Austria of the Austria-Hungarian Empire called Metternich. Did Metternich's holy alliance stop the spread of capitalism and the, the overthrow of feudalism? 
when there was a revolution in France in 1789, this, was, this revolution was a bourgeois revolution, was a capitalist revolution. Now, Metternich was supporting feudalism, and his answer was to launch war to, to defeat the, the, the capitalist movement in France. But he failed. The only justified wars are the just wars, like the anti-colonial wars. Wars of hegemony will fail and waste time and opportunity. Dialogue is the correct way. I thank you. Thank you so much.